Well, amid the controversies that surround the uh, Second Amendment to the Constitution, uh, there are areas of consensus, and that has to do with the background check system, keeping guns out of the hands of people with mental illness, uh, convicted felons, people who commit domestic violence. But tragically, uh, we saw the, the system fail, um, and 26 people are now dead, 20 more wounded as a result of the tragedy that occurred in, in Texas on uh, this last Sunday. Um, we intend to work with colleagues and the administration to come up with legislation that will both ensure the fact that the federal government, particularly the Department of Defense and all the military branches, comply with the law and upload this information through the uh, Uniform Code of Military Justice Proceedings, like the court martial this shooter went through, uh, that all of those are uploaded into the, uh, the background uh, database. Uh, but also to come up with an additional set of carrots and sticks where necessary to incentivize the states to likewise uh, comply with the law and upload those results into the uh, background database. Because when the shooter or the gun purchaser like this individual lie, about their background. He lied about the fact that he had a felony conviction. He lied about the fact that he had been convicted of a crime of domestic violence. Then the only way to catch them is through the background database, the NIC system. And so I believe that there's an opportunity for us here to work on a bipartisan basis to come up with a way to address this one consensus solution uh, to a very real problem, which may well have prevented the outcome we saw occur in Texas last Sunday. Well, it is currently the law that, uh, that the federal government needs to upload these convictions uh, for domestic violence, uh, felonies, into the Federal uh, Bureau of Investigation database that search when people attempt to purchase firearms. But when the federal government doesn't do this, and it's been reported that the Air Force just simply through inadvertence, human error, or some reason failed to do it, then uh, there's nothing there to contradict the misrepresentation made by the purchaser when they go to buy the firearm. For the, so we, can, we have better control over the federal government than we do the states. Under the Constitution, there's nothing we can do to mandate that the states co cooperate. But that's why I believe through some collection of sticks and uh, carrots, uh, we might be able to incentivize the states to cooperate more. You remember this was a problem a few years ago and when the uh, Virginia Tech shooter, uh, who had previously been adjudicated mentally ill, um, that information had not been uploaded. So there are enormous problems with the background check system. As I said, this is one of those areas of consensus in a very contentious, on a very contentious topic. So at the very least, my hope is that we can do what we can to close those gaps and to fix it so people like this shooter don't fall through the gaps. Do you have a bigger sense, do you have a sense of a bigger picture of the gap in reporting on domestic violence? Well, we've, all you have to do is look at some of the statistics and we'll be sharing those with you to see that they are very much underreported uh, by the states and by the federal government. The federal government does not appear to report any domestic violence. They do report um, a dishonorable discharge, which is another reason to prohibit somebody from purchasing a firearm. But there's, this seems to be an area where there is bipartisan support to come in and fix the background check system to make sure that we keep firearms out of the hands of convicted felons, people with mental illness, people who commit domestic violence and the like. If we can address that and close those gaps, I think that'll be a big improvement. Senator